Oh, doggy. We've got all sorts of superhero goodies packed into the latest trailer for the upcoming DC flick, The Flash. The previous trailer took a bit of a more comedic look at it, but this one is all action and drama. Let's hop right in. Right off the bat, we're at old school Wayne Manor. Holy smokes, that's a fun throwback, all the way back to the Tim Burton days. It's looking weathered and worn and is totally surrounded by fog. Both Barrys are heading on in and the discussion of losing parents is brought up. Seems to be a pretty common theme in superhero media, hey? Those are some old fingers stroking the picture frame with a couple of well-to-do folks featured. Who could it be? Well, who's super famous for losing his parents? Oh, now if you didn't already know, you're definitely in the know now. We get a sweet, sweet look at the old bat computer covered with a tarp or something, implying that it's been out of use for a good long while. You can even see some schematics for stuff like the Batmobile and the Batwing on there. Hell yeah. An iconic intro to the Batcave here, with actual bats fluttering away as the stylized bat elevator brings the boys down into the dark, readying the Batwing for flight. The monologue going on here is a definite theme setter for this movie, as we know that there will be two berries, one who lost both his parents and became the Flash, fighting crime. Come in. Now we get to the secret bookcase door opening up, revealing not one, not two, but seven bat suits in this sneaky little hidey hole. We've already seen these bat suits in previous ads, but it doesn't make this any less exciting. Michael Keaton, who we then see in all of his 70-year-old glory. Oh, and also there's the alive mother. The next flashback we see is very blue tinted and has a mom that is definitely not very alive. Barry is also wearing a blue shirt this time around. His dad does his best Skrillex sample impression and Barry is off running. This is a cool moment when the time surrounding Barry seems to be running at a different speed than it should. The sky goes from day to night in a matter of moments, and current Barry watches his child self head off in search of help. The next shot has Barry in the time stream, making his way to a new dimension. Peep that little flash of blue right at the very end. He's then back in time at a climactic moment from Man of Steel. General Zod's army is here ready to scramble our dear sweet planet. The weapons being used here should be familiar to anyone who's seen that movie. Here's something new in a quick shot. A young boy seems to be moving towards the chaos into danger. He's reaching out towards something, maybe a family member, beloved pet, or wayward balloon on a string. But behind him, who's that? There's somebody all stanced up like a superhero, but their costume looks like something that would give Edna Mode a heart attack. All different pieces, different colors, maybe a tactical vest in the middle, no cohesion. At least there's no cape. Could this be the alternate Barry trying to be a hero a little too early, or is it a different hero we haven't had revealed to us yet? This world must die is the next thing we hear, and then we see Michael Shannon as General Zod for the first time since Man of Steel. Looking good, Mike. He's extra dangerous this time around, as it doesn't look like there's anyone with the powers to stop him in this timeline. At least, not yet. General Bedlam and mayhem ensue, but the Barry we know is there to help out. You can just make him out of the base of a collapsing hospital, which he will scale later in this trailer. Now it's time for some Supergirl action. She flies away from alternate Barry, you can tell it's him because he's in yellow, outside. And then we get both Barrys and her in the Batcave, asking if they know what the S on her chest stands for. Our Barry knows that it means Hope, another callback to Man of Steel, causing Supergirl to be taken aback a bit. What other Barry's up to in the background, I don't really know. Supergirl then flies above the Batwing and flexes super hard on Batman by going supersonic midair. Good show. Michael Keaton in his full bat suit minus the cowl then asks, You wanna get nuts? Let's get nuts. A classic callback to a scene from 1989's Batman where he takes a swing at a vase to try and intimidate the Joker. Too bad he didn't have any pottery to whack with a baton this time around. Now that would have been fun. He pulls a lever which sends sparks flying and we get a better look at the three of our young heroes. The trio scoots in on a battlefield, each with a very distinctive posture that lets us know exactly what's going on in their head. Barry, wearing his flash suit, is determined and experienced, crouching a little lower than the rest to keep himself stable. Supergirl, wearing her costume that we've seen quite a bit of so far, is confident and ready for anything. Also, nice thumb holes in the sleeves. I used to love it when hoodies did that. And finally, we've got alternate Barry, who's wearing what appears to be a bat suit painted red with some nice little yellow details. Check out that repurposed utility belt. He, of course, is still getting used to whatever powers he's recently acquired and is a little less stable than our other two heroes. Behind them, the battle rages. You gotta wonder what the military thinks when supers show up on the battlefield. Are they relieved? Or maybe a little bit miffed that three teenagers can outperform them like it's nothing? Taking us back in time a little, likely, we then got a shot of Keaton's Batman taking both berries to what looks like a Russian prison. This is likely where they're gonna be breaking Supergirl out of. 
This leads us into some more flashbacks, where our Barry, note the blue, is looking at some old memories on the fridge. We then get an evocative shot of a mystery hand, limp and injured. Could this be a dying ally? Or perhaps alternate Barry, when he seeks out a whole lot of electricity in order to get him his powers. In another blue memory scene, we see Barry, wearing the world's smallest beanie, shed a tear super slow as he visits with his mother for what is probably a fraction of a second. Now it's Batfleck time, and he's giving Barry a little bit of a different lesson. He claims that the scars that we have make us who we are, and that we're not meant to go back and fix them. Don't let your tragedy define you, which is interesting advice coming from a superhero. You know, the type of person who tends to take a personal tragedy and let it fuel the rest of their life. Although I suppose Batfleck is better at avoiding this kind of behavior than other Batmen from the past. He did join the Justice League after all and learn about teamwork. As he dispenses this knowledge, there's footage of him dropping out from some sort of aircraft on his dual front-wheeled bat cycle and zipping through the streets in active traffic. As the tragedy line rolls out, Supergirl is carrying someone way, way up into the sky. Is this the fallen ally with the limp hand that we saw earlier? Perhaps a deep-fried alternate berry. Speaking of frying berry, look at this agony he's experiencing in the next shot. This is Barry Prime, as evidenced by the suit and short hair, so who's doing this to him? Could be Zod, but that doesn't really line up with what we know about that baddie. What some folks are thinking is that alternate Barry ends up as Reverse Flash, looking to inflict some serious pain. Or perhaps even Dark Flash, who has had a toy leak. Supergirl demands to know what someone did, and then we watch Batman tie two spaceships together and force a mid-air collision. Lots of orange and blue in this movie. Of course, Supergirl is big mad at Zod, who probably killed someone important like Keaton Batman and whacks him with a pipe. We then see Keaton Batman protect Barry in a tunnel from active gunfire using his John Wick cape. That can't feel too nice, especially for a 70-year-old. Batfleck is back in the streets on his crazy bat cycle, zipping along as cars get tossed behind him. Barry runs up the side of a collapsing building, likely the one we mentioned earlier. Batfleck dodged a big old explosion and flaps his wings. And here's that hypothetical huge dose of electricity to alternate Barry. Looks like an improvised shock machine inside of the Batcave, and boy does it look unpleasant. If you weren't convinced that a villain arc from alternate Barry was on the horizon, just pay attention here. After we see that exquisite display of pain and shock, Barry Prime says they can't fix this. A realist who's seen bad stuff happen. Alternate Barry refuses to accept that, saying nobody dies. The shock of not being able to save who he wants to could send him down the wrong path. Keaton's Batman falls to his knees on the battlefield, and then another speedy guy in a totally black suit pops up onto the Batwing and crunches the cockpit like it's nothing. This makes Keaton Batman hit the eject button and glide away like a gosh darn sugar glider before his aircraft hurtles towards the ground. That's gotta be expensive. Multiple iterations of the Batman logo flash by, then the Superman logo, and finally the title card for the Flash. A funny little sting then cuts in, with Keaton Batman seemingly very excited to show off his suit's parachuting abilities. The final silhouette of the Batwing floating against the moon is iconic as anything. And of course, the trailer recommends a quick trip to your local comic shop to pick up some of that inspiration for the movie. Flashpoint seems to be a big one to catch up on if you want to know about the events of the movie ahead of time. Reading it'll probably also help you catch more Easter eggs. And with that, we're at the end of the trailer. It's looking like this is the movie that's set up to reset the DC continuity and push things in the direction of James Gunn and Peter Safran's DCU. The Flash and his powers always come with world-altering implications. So what better place to hit hard reset now that we know it's coming up? It will also be very interesting to see what happens with Ezra Miller, considering all that's come out about him lately. What did you think of the trailer? Does it get you hyped up for this superhero mashup, or are you over it already? Make sure you let us know down in the comments, and subscribe to Cinematica for more like this. Thanks for watching.